Yo, 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 what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another video. Today, we're going to be talking about Valorant console and we're making an updated tier list. And the only reason why we're doing that is because this time all agents are included and this is a tier list all about ranked. Yes, I repeat, this is all about who are the best agents in ranked and why. So let's get right into it. First things first, we got Sage. And unfortunately, Sage, Sage's kit is just way too outdated. She is good for what she does. However, until you get into the higher levels, she is completely useless. She provides no additional role compared to what a Cypher and Killjoy can do. And then she gets outclassed by everybody. That's why, first off, Sage F tier. I'm sorry for the people who are only who can only play Sage. She is the worst agent in the game. I choose so many other agents over Sage, and it's not even pro like it's not even problematic. Anybody who has any IQ of this game will know that Sage provides zero use. Next, we got Chamber. And I'll say this. Originally, I said Chamber. Should, you shouldn't play Chamber. But however, everybody's uh, aim has hopefully improved since the release of the game. And I'll say this. Um, I, I've always been a big fan of Chamber. The problem with Chamber is he's the definition of he was too strong when he was released. Now, they had to tone it right back. And so he's suffering from all those nerfs. So I'll say this, and there's a reason why, but at the current moment, Chamber is perfect the way he is. Do not nerf, do not buff Chamber. He's average. He's he's a, just above average, I would say. So I would say B and C are average. So I would say C is pretty much average, and then B is just above average. So next we got Killjoy, and I'll say this right now, Killjoy is definitely a top two Sentinel in this game. I won't spoil it, however, I do think she gets outclassed by one other. But a good Killjoy in your team can really change the tides of any game. So I'm going to put Killjoy at A tier. And I'll say this right now. I, I think this agent is probably one of the hardest agents to play in this game. Cypher straight up. If you can master Cypher, no matter if you're offense or defense, he is a goddamn menace. That's why I would say Cypher is an S tier agent. If you can master Cypher, he is right up there with the best compared to anybody in his role it just depends on the map you actually in certain maps like ascent you might actually prefer to choose killjoy over cypher mostly because there's not that many good trips that setups with the way um ascent is organized but like on a map like split uh breeze definitely um lotus i know we haven't seen some of those maps yet but i'll, I'll say this right now compared to what other maps are in this game and that i know cypher is Clearly, just a bit better than Killjoy. And next we got Deadlock. I did put Deadlock originally at A tier on my last tier list. And the only reason why I did that is because people did not know how to play this game properly. And you can take advantage of that. People just run into sites and not care about Sentinel Util at all. But since then, uh, people have gotten a lot smarter. And so a lot of people are much more patient when it comes to Deadlock Utility. However, I won't, I won't, I won't say she's bad at all. There is definitely some uses you can do with Deadlock, and I have dominated personally with Deadlock, and I'm actually looking forward to actually doing more with her. So I would say she's an average agent. She's a good, solid C-tier agent. I would say Chamber's probably just a bit better. So next we got Controller, and I'll say this right now. Controller is probably one of those defining roles where a good controller and a bad controller is a night and day difference, and mostly because of the individual use. So for example, uh, we'll start off with Viper. If you have a bad Viper on your team, rude. Because most people, especially in ranked, will only pick Viper and that's it. In a competitive setting, you'll definitely see Viper uh, mixed with other controllers in a role. So you might see a Viper in Astra, a Viper in Omen, depending on the map. So let's say this right now for ranked wise, I would say Viper is a B tier, especially with all her nerfs that she has de definitely received prior to Valorant console coming out. Before she had two mollies, uh, the like a, the wall just completely stayed up for the whole time. Next, we got Harbor. I would say Harbor Harbor is like actually a very solid agent. I did put him in the bottom tier, like the bottom tier of last time. I'll say this right now. Um, I don't think Harbor. It's just the difference of what do you think? Who's better, Harbor or Viper? On a map like Icebox, maybe you can make that argument. But Icebox is not out yet and eventually it will be coming. But on the other maps, there is some argument you can make for Ascent. I've seen some pretty cool stuff when it comes to Ascent. But like, that's it. Um, I, I would rather choose a Viper over a Harbor at the current moment. That's but don't sleep on Harbor. Harbor is definitely a menace and is a pain to play against. I'll say this right now. Omen is the definition of all around amazing. 
you can definitely solo carry a lot of games with just Omen himself. He can cross map with his alt. His alt, I wouldn't say is over, sorry, underrated, but it's definitely don't like, it could change a game. <laughs> like I'm going to say this a lot. It could definitely change a game if you're not sleeping and preparing for an Omen play. And a proper Omen who knows how to use his kit properly can definitely make a huge difference. So at the current moment, I will definitely put Omen in S tier. And the reason why we put Omen in S tier is because all around, I think he's the better agent. He can smoke anywhere on the map. He definitely controls the flow a lot better. And you're more likely to be in more gunfights with Omen compared to one of my other favorite agents within the role. Uh, next, we got Clove. I'll say this. Clove is the reina of the, control, <laughs> the controller faction, I would say. The controller role. Like, Clove herself is okay. But she definitely provides a lot of useful information, a lot of use when it comes to Valorant Ranked. I've seen a lot of people play Clove just so they have a proper smoke on the team. However, I still think Omen is a much better agent than Clove herself. And I would rather choose an Omen over Clove because I find Cloves are a bit too selfish, kind of like some Reynas are. So that's why I would probably put Clove maybe in P tier. But don't sleep on her kit like a good like if you can hit your shots like she can be a menace i just don't think she provides that much good usage other than her smokes compared to the other agents when it comes to brim though brim is the definition of the easiest agent to play in valorant that goes from pc and console there is some cool stuff you can definitely use with some brim lineups so i'm definitely just gonna put brim at d tier he is a smoker he does provide useful information there is reason why throughout all the metas within Valorant, Bind is probably Brim's best site for a reason or best uh, map for a reason. So if you ever play Bind, don't be afraid to pick Brim. Definitely com like competes on a high level on Bind compared to the other agents. So I would probably choose Brim over any of the other agents when it comes to Bind. However, on every other map, I can't, you can't really make an argument unless you're one of those uh, li lineup Larrys. Okay. Now, this might be a hot pick. I definitely put this next agent in do not play mostly because she's a very hard agent to play when it comes to ranked. However, I will be impressed. Like I'll give credit where credit's due. I've had a lot of people who talk on their mics within ranked. And so I'm super impressed. So I'm going to put this right now. I'm going to put Asher at eight tier. And the reason why I'm going to put her at eight tier is she kind of acts like a controller in Sentinel one. You can definitely like control a site and prevent people from pushing onto a site and delay as long as you can compared to the other agents on this list. Definitely a good Astra with good comms and ranked is definitely someone you should not be sleeping on. Her kit provides so much more useful information and the abilities, the fact that you can place a star down, fake smoke, and bait out enemy util or bait out enemy agents is absolutely ridiculous. I think she provides a lot more than Clove. The problem is she's a very hard agent to play. And if you can get used to going into the um, her astral form and coming out and being able to adjust on the fly, she is definitely an agent to worth trying. Next, we got the initiator rule. And I'll say this right now. Breach is... I would say Breach is a very above average agent only because his flashes are kind of difficult to adjust to on console compared to PC. PC, it's actually pretty easy to flick away from his flashes on a console depending on people's sensitivity. You can really abuse that on console. So I'll put Breach maybe at B tier. I'll definitely say this. Your room Breaches are absolutely a menace. And if you ever have a duo, I would recommend playing your room and Breach. I know it sounds ridiculous. Why would you play two of these two agents? But I'll say this right now. The combos you can do with your room and Breach are absolutely fantastic. And it's def definitely worth giving it a shot. When, when it comes to KO, KO is a definition of... What happens if you put a CSGO agent or a character within Valorant? And I'll say this right now, KO can be really good, but also can be very bad. At peak KO, he is definitely above average agent. However, he can also be the worst agent on the team and uh, definitely a teammate that can flash you constantly, constantly, constantly. And definitely his knife provides a lot of information. His alt does wonders where it's a free extra life, depending on if your teammates can res you. KO is probably a good solid B tier agent for me. I, I won't say he's bad at all. He's definitely a lot better than most. And all around, I definitely say give him a shot.
Next, we got Sova, and I think Sova is actually... I, I think Sova is amazing. I think he's one of my favorite agents to play, straight up. He is, he is a menace. A good Sova is a pain to play against, because you... Like, especially with those lineups and stuff, you gotta be careful. If you haven't already, definitely go check out our Avid Stronus if you want to try out some Sova lineups. Definitely with all the nerfs he has received in the past year or so, has definitely lowered himself from S tier. So I would definitely say Sova is probably an A tier agent right now. I would say he's usually the second initiator in a double initiator comp. While you might have someone like Gecko or Breach or Guy or KO as the other initiator. He really combos well with KO and Breach, so it's definitely an agent you should give a shot in the future. Next, we got Gecko. There's a reason why Gecko is in my top five easiest agents to play. I believe he's at number four or number five. He is super easy. I would say, I would say borderline, he is busted to a certain degree, and he is definitely the best initiator within his, um, he is definitely the best initiator within his role. So I'm gonna put Gecko at S tier. Next, we got Sky, and Sky's okay. I would say she's pretty average at where she is right now, especially with all the technical stuff that she has received from the nerfs. I definitely say she does definitely has some uses with her kit. She's not as amazing as she used to be. So I'll probably put Sky maybe at D tier at the current moment. Next we got Fade. Fade's a good agent, but he doesn't really carry any maps. A lot of her good usage comes with combining her util with other um, initiators. You will never see her be a solo initiator on a team. Usually you would have a second initiator. Unlike Gecko and Sova, those guy, those two can actually carry a team as being the solo initiator. Unfortunately, I wouldn't say... I, off the top of my head, I don't think I can think of any like good competitive comps that has uh, her as the solo initiator. So that's why I'm probably going to put her at C tier. Don't, but don't get me wrong. If you can run a double initiator comp in ranked, which usually never happens, especially with the Instalock Jets and ISOs. She would definitely be maybe a B tier or an A tier agent, but because most people would just play one initiator on ranked. Next, we're going to finish off with the Duelist, and I'll, I love the Duelist factions. I think they're at a good spot right now. We'll start off with Yoru. Yoru himself is a very good agent. Um, I, I, have, I have certain biases because I think Yoru technically is one of the best Duelists in the game. The problem is only there's only a few people who actually have hit that mark. And so his skill skill level is so high that it's probably the highest within any agent within the game. Yoru himself re works really well with Breach, Sova, Fade. But at the same time, he can also be the worst agent in the Valorant ranked. Like if you can work on his kit really well, he is definitely an S tier agent. But in reality, for the average individual who pick him up, he's going to be an A tier agent. You just really got to work on your flashes, but if you can get to mastering the kit and understanding how the kit works and watching how to, my, actually watching my guide, how to properly use them, you might turn them into an S tier agent. So I want to keep Yoru at A tier. I can't be persuaded for S tier, but at the current moment, I'm definitely going to say A tier. Next we got Phoenix. Um, I'll say this. Phoenix probably has the best flash in the game and that's it. Like... Maybe his ult is pretty good too, a free extra life. The problem is he kind of goes into, he's outdated for his uh, faction slash agent pool. Um, like again, I can only think of so many top of my heads. Like he, his flash is so good, like on PC and his flash is even better on console. Like I, I want to put him up, like up high, but I might put him like a, no, no, I would say, I would say he's, He's a solid agent. Next, when it comes to Jet, um, there's not much to say about Jet, really. Um, Jet is probably the best opping agent in the game. Um, instead of one other agent, I would say Jet is probably maybe two other agents, depending on what, if you disagree with or agree with me with Yoru. I would probably put Jet as an S tier agent. And the reason why is, other than Chamber, she provides so much good usage when it comes to the op use. At the current moment, Reyna is good for rank, Valorant ranked console. The problem is she doesn't have that much... Her kit doesn't really do well with good like kit usage. And a lot of her kit usage involves getting a kill, but you're not guaranteed to kill every round. So I'm going to put Reyna at B tier. She's above average. And if you're good at shooting and shooting like clicking heads, I guess, 
she can definitely be like an S tier agent for some. But if you're not if you're not the best or if you're not good at shooting, don't pick Reyna. I'm not trying to downplay how effective she can be when she's played by a really good player. The problem is in a team setting, especially with a team tactical shooter, she's not a team agent. Next we got Neon. And I'm I'm struggling with Neon right now. And the only reason why, with even with all of her buffs she has received. We don't know the effects of her buff yet because how broken ISO is and how overshadowing ISO buffs have like overshadowed like the neon buffs. But at the current moment, I don't know where to place neon. I, like what I've seen within competitive settings, neon is a goddamn menace, especially with the Bucky and Stinger. Unfortunately, she does have that delay when it comes to knee sliding on like PC, but they have added that within console to adjust to how fair potentially her kit could be. She is really good combined with Breach and such. I want to put her right now. I want to put Neon at A tier, but I, I'm struggling right now at the current moment because I don't know how her kid's going to react for the long term after the Neon buff. Oh, sorry, after the ISO buff because it's been shat overshadowed everything. So at the current moment, I'm going to put her at B tier, but I might, I might completely change this. Um, I would definitely put her at B tier for now. Next, we got Raze. Raze is the definition of one of the best mobility agents or the best characters with the, one of the best kits for duelists, but also mobility, but also the factor that she can solo carry a team completely. The problem is I don't see that many good Raze satchel players on console at the current moment. Definitely want to give that a try in the future because everybody's playing ISO. So until then, I'm probably going to put... I still think Raze is so good, though. Even with the nerfs she received for her satchel movement. I'm going to put Raze at A tier. She can provide so much good stuff when it comes to her kit. She's probably the best duelist other than Yoru on Bind. So I would definitely say give Raze a shot. If you still play ISO, I hate you. Play something different. Stop abusing a broken agent. And finally, we got the most broken agent in the game. And I'm not even going to put him on S tier. I'm going to put him in a whole new category himself. He belongs in his own faction, his own placement. He's like, the, he's a god right now. He's so annoying to play against. Especially on console. On PC, it's di a little bit different, but on console, he is a nightmare to play against. So I want to change the color match there's not I, I i hate facing isos and every single mortal lobby every single radiant lobby there's always an iso and you know the that iso if he's a good shooter he's gonna put up 20 kills a game and even though i play agents that somewhat counter him he is so annoying so i'm gonna put iso at s tier or S++ ISO tier. So that's it for the video, everybody. Don't be afraid to hit that like and subscribe down below. And if you completely disagree with this tier list, comment down below. I'm actually super curious to see if what everybody thinks the correct tier list is, or if you completely disagree with one of my takes. So I'll see you next time, everybody, and peace out.